What's up happening? This is McGarren Flack with another painting demonstration video. With starting in this painting, as you can see, I just started with a quick little gesture drawing. Once the gesture drawing is well established, I know the proportions are pretty accurate, I'm gonna go and establish a good straight edge contour line drawing of the subject. So as you can see here, I have the model in the photograph sitting there off to the left, and I'm trying to accurately depict the proportions and shapes and angles in this painting. Once I have the contour figured out between the light side and the shadow side, I break it down into light shapes and shadow shapes. Look at those fun shadow shapes. This painting is focused on a grisaille. This is a full value grisaille, not like the other video focuses on the poster study. This painting demo is full value. So it's rendering form using a grisaille method, the French word which means gray. So we call it a grisaille because you're using an umber and a white or a black and a white to make it gray. I'm squinting down to see these shapes more accurately because it's important to be able to get the accuracy of these shapes and proportions, especially when you're doing a figure. I'm using oil to thin down the paints. And after I have the light shapes and shadow shapes relatively established, I'm gonna put in the background values so that I can see what the value structures look like in relationship to each other. After I have the values in the background placed and my darkest darks established, I will start to work from the core shadow over into the terminator. So I'm going from a darker value into a lighter value of the flesh tone. As you can see, to get the lighter values, I just add a little bit of white to that umber that I have mixed in the middle. And I start to place the value structures relatively simply. So I'm looking at the simple value structures of the light shapes in relationship to the dark values and shapes. It's very blocky. There's no real definition at this stage of the painting. Uh, this grisaille took me an hour and 15 minutes to paint, and the size is about 12 by 16. So it's a pretty small painting. I usually paint a lot bigger than this, but it's nice to be able to get a study in there and figure out these soft, subtle value transitions and how to soften up edges and make them a little bit harder, so. I'm using the edge of the brush to apply a little bit of texture. I'm also lightening up the value a little bit more so that the form can turn. Establishing some of those larger planes in the light, but also working on the texture. That's the point of a grisaille is to build up texture with your paints and also figure out the values. Now you don't have to have any texture in your grisaille, but I personally like to do it because when I do glazing on top of it, it allows more interesting mark making. At this point, I thought that the background was still a little bit too light for her flesh tone, so I darkened the values down a little bit more so that I could see those values more accurately. Here I'm going back in, refining those dark values in some of those shadow shapes. Using a relatively large brush until I get here to the face. 
and start to render out the values. After I have the lights and darks established in the figure and the background, I will go back in and start to look at edge quality. How soft is the edge between the lights and the darks? How hard is the edge between the lights and the darks? And paint those accordingly. Focusing on the face now and the value structures that are in the face. I'm looking for general placement. Again, I'm still squinting down my eyes to be able to see where is the edge quality, how soft of an edge is it from the cheekbone to the jaw, from the cheekbone or the zygomatic up to the temporal part of the skull. And here I'm just lightening up those value structures in the cheekbone and the top of the skull. I, I like to imagine it as like a, an egg. So the head is egg-shaped and there's a lighter value that's going to be seen. There's only one lighter value. It's not everything rendered up to the same level of finished attributes. So I select which value I think is lightest in the face. And to me, it looks like the temporal part of her face the temporal bone is the lightest value. So I have that painted in as the lightest value. And now I'm just going through and working out those shapes. I have a smaller brush to be able to get some of those details in. And it is a sable so that I can focus on softening up edges and transitions. And I have a good amount of paint on there so that I can push it around, soften out some shapes and edges. If I want to make something hard, like in the ear, I'll just get more paint and apply it on there directly. So here I'm focusing on that hair, those darker values, establishing them a little bit more. The eyebrow, eyelid, the shape under the nose, the lips, just working out and rendering those shapes and forms that I'm looking at. Because this painting is so small, it's, I'm not so concerned about getting an exact likeness. Getting a general likeness is great for me, but I do know a lot of artists that do paintings this size and love to finish them at this size, which is stellar. I think it's harder to paint smaller than it is to paint larger. Plus I enjoy painting larger a lot more. Here I'm changing now to the arm, the viewpoint of that arm, and I'm getting a larger brush and going with the form of the arm and then also against the form of the arm to create texture. The reason why I like to have texture in my grisaille is that it catches the light in a certain way that makes it look lighter than it actually is. So I can keep my values really close and tight together, but because of the angle of the strokes of the paintbrush in the paint, it picks up parts of the light and that reflects it into the human eye and it makes it look almost like a highlight. Not quite a highlight because I don't want to make them look all shiny and glossy. I'm refining the shadow shapes in the arm and turning that form between the shadow, to the core, to the terminator, to the halftone. So I'm just rendering that information and pushing the values. I noticed that the arm was too low, so I'm pulling it up a little bit more and pushing the paint around, darkening the value of that forearm. and lightening up some of the values that are in the extensor group of the forearm muscles. That, there's a cast shadow that's there and then you have the ulna defining it. 
Now going back into those dark values of the other forearm and hand shapes. Very careful on simplifying the hand shapes. If you have trouble seeing hands or seeing the shapes of hands, I'd recommend to squint down, really look at the shape and determine how blocky you can make it. The blockier you can make it, the better off it's going to look. And when I say blocky, abstract the shapes. So instead of painting one finger at a time, look at the plane changes between the forearm and the thumb, or the plane changes between each finger, or maybe it's a group of fingers. So use the brush to express some good texture in your paintings. You don't have to use a brush, you can use a palette knife to be able to get some of the same type of effects, especially a really nice sharp hard edge. Here I'm using a sable brush to get some of those really nice detailed areas of the fingers. and of the hand so I can see the cast shadow shapes better. The video doesn't really show the difference of the value structures between the shadows of the flesh and the shadows of the dress or the background. It looks like it's pretty much the same value, but it's not. After painting in the flesh, I go back in now and I'm starting to paint the shapes of the dress. I'm doing the negative shapes, so the darker values. I'm going to leave the lighter values there in the dress with the uh, underpainting. And then I come back in with a paintbrush and start to establish those lighter values in the dress. So that way I'll have three different value structures when I'm working on the painting of the dress. I'm not so concerned about all the various shapes right now. This is just for demonstration purposes. If I do a finished painting of this, then I really start to focus on those shapes in the dress and I will handle them just as accurately as I would with the figure. As you can see, I'm pushing the value structures a little bit more in the hand making some lighter values and some darker values so that the form can turn better and it describes the forms of the hands better so it's really important to try to get those shapes nailed out here i'm zoomed back out working on those light shapes again in the dress And going back in, painting the background a little bit darker because that will make her flesh tone look lighter in value. I didn't use any direct white in this painting. They were all mixed value structures, so I usually don't like to use direct white unless there is a white object that is there that has a high reflection or something in it, then I will use direct white. Okay, coming back in, finishing off some of these values I thought was a little bit distracting in the background versus the dress. So I'm darkening all those values so that your focus goes towards the face and the front part of the figure. Softening up some of the edges. Man, painting is fun. That's it for the painting. I hope you learned a lot by watching the painting demonstration. Remember, have fun. Apply different brush strokes in different directions so you can move the form. Happy painting.